How is AI Gemini integrated and used in the business? So if you're a small business owner and you're curious, what AI should I be using? I've got Google Workspace and Gemini sits there in the kind of sidebar, but you find yourself using ChatGPT because that's what you've been using for the past few years. Well, this is an important update for you. Now, for a long period of time, Gemini was very far behind ChatGPT, and I would say pretty embarrassingly behind. The sad part of this story is that Google were the ones that invented machine learning and the fundamental principles and computer science concepts that built the building blocks that OpenAI was able to create ChatGPT with. But Google was slow to release their models to the public for whatever reasons they had. Eventually, Google, bit by bit, have spent the last few years on the backtrack catching up. And I've got to say, they've only just finally got to the point where I can wholeheartedly recommend Gemini is pretty much on par, if not better, at doing tasks than GPT is. Now, you can go and look through the many verified videos on my channel where for many, many months, I said that Gemini stunk and GPT was the way for most business owners. But things changed. And from about the start of 2025, Gemini started getting good enough that I've now switched to finally being able to use Gemini every day. And I've got to say, I don't miss ChatGPT. I even canceled my subscription. Now, are there some things that Gemini doesn't get right from time to time? Yeah, sure. But the times that I've gone back to try GPT when there's been a particular meme about creating certain images and I've decided to go ahead and give that a go myself, well, sometimes GPT downright throws bugs at me. And one of the things that I really love about working with the Google ecosystem in general is that they're pretty damn good with their infrastructure. And when they build a product, typically that product works effectively and it works at scale reasonably reliably. Is it perfect? No. But is it more perfect than GPT? Yeah, I would argue yes, in terms of reliability. Now, where do we use Gemini? How should we use Gemini? Well, my recommendation would be when you need to do a query with AI, you open a new browser tab and you just click the Gemini button. You go to gemini.google.com and you put in your question. You put in your response into Gemini and you start chatting away. Right now, everybody gets access to Gemini if you have a Google Workspace account. Google did a bit of a sneaky. They were trying to force everyone to pay for Gemini and eventually they realized, hey, let's just put the price up on Workspace for everybody and then give everyone Gemini. And that's what they did. Like it or not, we've all got Gemini, including all of your staff. And if, such as in the case of Zoom or Slack or any other third-party application, which may be a double up to a feature inside of Workspace, if you're concerned about the costs of subscriptions in your business, then it might be worth considering ditching the subscription to Claude or ChatGPT and instead just using Gemini if everyone's already got a license for free. There's a couple of different versions that are out right now as of this recording and right now 2.5 Flash is the main model for working with the basics of Gemini. If you just wanna get day-to-day -day stuff done 2.5 Flash is the one, and then 2.5 Pro is going to take a little bit longer to think about its questions before it comes back to you. I find that if I want a question answered with a bit more nuance, or maybe it's a research task or a question that I really care about, I'll go to the Pro model. And if I just need a quick answer for day-to-day -day stuff, I'm definitely using the Flash model because I'm going to get answers almost as fast as a Google search. Now, how else should you use Gemini or where should you use Gemini? Well, because Google are pushing it pretty hard, you're gonna find it pretty much everywhere in the Google ecosystem. Uh, you'll see here that inside my Gmail, on the right-hand side, I can click Gemini and I can give it any kind of basic prompts like help me catch up on my emails from the last week. And it's gonna automatically query the emails in my inbox and let me know what I'm looking at. Now, this is a test mailbox, so these are not uh, particularly interesting, but it gives you a good idea there. If I've got an individual email open, I can say, tell me about this email and give me a summary. And it's going to give me a summary of the email that I happen to have open at the time. There we go. Again, not all that interesting. This happens to be a couple of test emails, but it's even giving me some suggested questions that I can ask, which, hey, Google, that's, uh, that's pretty helpful. I like that. Now you can immediately see that one of the best advantages of having Gemini in the Google ecosystem is that it's right there and it's able to talk to all of your Google data. 
I've asked Gemini things like, hey, can you go into my Google Drive and search all of my files and tell me from the last three months of meeting transcripts from our Google Meet meetings, tell me a bit of the vibe of my business right now. Tell me what I should be focusing on. Tell me what my team are concerned with. Tell me what are the most important projects that I should be monitoring. And Gemini gave me a really good response from that. Having Google's Gemini deeply integrated into the rest of the Google ecosystem makes it have access to data that no one else really does. And that makes it a tool that's much more useful than anyone else has access to. If I wanna use it in my calendar, in my drive, in my creating a document or updating a spreadsheet, yeah, there's some pretty good features there, but I find Gemini is most powerful when I'm running a query on my data that it has access to right across the Google ecosystem. So what does that look like? Well, if you're trying to set up Gemini or you're trying to talk to your Google Drive in Gemini and you can't get access, well, first we're gonna go into the admin panel and let's go into our Gemini settings. The easiest way to get around the admin panel, you go to admin.google.com, you sign in as your administrator account and then you just search. That's usually I find is the easiest way to get around things. Of course, it's gonna ask you to authenticate who you are a million times for security. Uh, let's go find our Gemini settings. Here we go. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do here is make sure that I've just basically switched on everything. Okay, so yeah, user access apps. Allow to access workspace apps. I've got this enabled and that's going to let it access my data in Google Drive. It's going to keep 36 months of retention from user information. All right, cool. So we've got that switched on now let's go down to gemini for workspace let's make sure all of these are switched on looks pretty good to me i'm just going to double check on 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 okay cool well let's go back to a gemini and see if i might get lucky and i can turn it on there we go so i'm going to connect my google workspace into gemini and it's going to ask me if i want to work on a specific document when i want to mention something I can hit the at button and uh, I can search like the whole of my Google workspace if I want, or I can choose to search just a specific app. I do love that it's now letting me search my tasks and my Google Keep, which is pretty cool. But let's go to workspace and say, I want you to look through everything you can see in my Google Drive and tell me what insights you have about my business. Now we're connecting to workspace, now we're cooking. All right, cool. So it's found an internet document, it's found a test document, it's found some presentations, it's found a meeting transcript, it's found a one-on-one -on -one agenda and a whole bunch of other text junk. I mean, this is our test app, so that, that makes sense. So that gives you an idea of the kind of thing you can do with Gemini. You can just start talking to it and asking about your workspace data, and it's going to start referencing everything that it can see inside your Google Drive. Now, a little bit creepy. People start wondering, oh, is Gemini going to upload my data to the internet? Is it going to share it with other people? Can other people query this? Google says very, very clearly down the bottom of this page, your chats are not used to improve our models. Personally, I don't care about that. I want them to improve the model, but many people don't like that. So they chose not to add that. Uh, it can also make mistakes, including about people, so double check it. So that's really, really clear. Google's not using your data in any way to update or train their model. Now, can you trust them? Yeah, you probably can trust them. Are Google always truthful? Yeah, for the most part. Are they evil? Yeah, I would say sometimes they are a little bit evil, but they're generally truthful at least. So I think you can trust Google, um, particularly because they have these in all kinds of organizations, including government organizations. They cannot risk a privacy scandal. They just can't. Meta kind of, you know, got away with it. They seem to go a little bit closer to the line of gray areas with that. But Google have always been really, really clear on the privacy side of things. Usage of your data and analytics, yeah, maybe not, maybe not so clean. Maybe not so clean when it comes to Google, but hey, you know, if we're on the Google ecosystem, you've already given up some level of your privacy in that Google are gonna be using some form of analytics and some form of insight from your behavior and you're kind of consenting that by signing up to Google. <laughs> That's the reality. <laughs> okay, so there's some of the basics on Gemini. I've got lots more videos on the channel on how to use Gemini for business, specifically if you're a business owner and you wanna learn more about how to use Gemini for your business, I have a business owner's guide to Gemini. And if you want help switching this on, you can click through to our website, itgenius.com. Our team will be happy to help you switch on all of the Gemini features, help you roll them out for your team. And let me know what's your best tip for Gemini. Drop it down in the comments down below.